Welcome traders to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook with me, Patrick Manley, uh, for week commencing April 5th. Heavily Europe-weighted DXY continued to edge higher last week, driven by the yawning divergence in how the US and Europe have handled the COVID crisis. The US is moving ahead on its next fiscal stimulus plan and enjoying a successful vaccine rollout. Europe's keynote fi uh, fiscal stimulus plan is stuck in a German courtroom and Europe is in the process of extending lockdowns. It's hard to see this narrative changing in the near term. Uh, in the week ahead, we will also see March PPI readings where understandably the focus is on rising input prices. Coming we will also see the release of the FOMC minutes on Wednesday and a variety of Federal Reserve speakers, including Fed Chair Powell on Thursday, taking part in the IMF spring meetings. I doubt the Fed is yet ready to change its dovish tune and as bond strategists conclude at the time of the March FOMC, the Fed has left the long end of the bond market unprotected. From a technical perspective, the uh, dollar index is grinding higher. We're looking for a test of the equality objective and yearly pivot at 94.15. Uh, Whilst uh, intra-week 92.46 acts as support, the new monthly pivot, then that should be the area where you can look for bullish reversal patterns to set long positions targeting the equality objective. At this stage, only a loss of the monthly pivot there at 92.35 would open a retest of support back to 91.26. Diverging transatlantic trends continue to weigh on the euro, and it's hard to see uh, what will change things near term. Providing some counter to this trend could be commodity prices this week, where upgrades to the IMF global growth forecast, largely in the US and China, could prove supportive of the commodity complex in general and prove slightly dollar negative. The European calendar looks quiet during this holiday shortened week, where some scrutiny could be given to the minutes of the March European Central Bank meeting released on Thursday. Here, the focus will be on how the broad support was for the front-loading of the Pandemic Emergency Purchase Programme, which has since seen weekly net ECB PET buying rise to $19 to $20 billion from a previous €12 billion. Euros. Uh, we also see whether the EU's recovery fund can overcome the holdup in the German Constitutional Court, which would at least be some welcome news. For the uh, euro, from a technical perspective, we are continue to sit at the yearly pivot here, 117.20, and this ascending trend line support from the March lows. Uh, whilst we hold this area support, there is the potential that we uh, run a little higher here to test the monthly pivot from below at 118.45. I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns in this zone to set short positions, ultimately targeting a test of the 116 pivotal support area. Really, I uh, can only get constructive on the euro on a close through 119 at this stage, suggesting that the current corrective move is concluded. Sterling seems to be the best place currency in the European G10 FX space. The theme of the fast vaccination process remains intact and has been underscored by the start of easing of restriction measures in the UK. This is in sharp contrast with Europe, where restrictions have been extended and tightened further. One should recognise the ongoing rise in GBP speculative longs as per the CFTC data, but given the unique uh, sterling position among European FX and the shift in the sterling trading pattern away from frequent undershoots into undervalued territory to periods of frequent overshoots into overvalued territory as this Brexit risk premium is being replaced by the vaccination dividend, the multi-month sterling outlook is pretty optimistic. Once euro stabilises, sterling should be able to push higher. And from a technical perspective, what I'd be looking for uh, would be a move through, a on a closing basis, through uh, the 139 to set up a move to retest that 140. However, I'm conscious that we could see a, uh, or sorry, I'm conscious that we have an unfilled equality objective down at 135.50. So cautious here as we trade at the monthly pivot. If we get a close through there uh, today, then we could trade up into that 140. However, if we do see any softness today in sterling, then uh, bearish reversal patterns would be an opportunity to set short positions looking for that equality objective to be tested first. Uh, 
the dollar yen had uh, a pretty incredible quarter last quarter, which should deliver some windfall gains to Japanese exporters and perhaps some outperformance of Japanese equities. Indeed, the Bank of Japan's Tankan Diffusion Index saw the component of large manufacturers in the first quarter rise above zero and return to third quarter 19, uh, 2019 levels. Like the euro, the Japanese yen as a low yielder has borne the brunt of this year's dollar advance. And apart from being overbought on a technical basis, there looks little to challenge this bullish trend. Indeed, the dollar yen retains the highest correlation of any dollar pair with, it, with the US 10 year yields, and the prospect at some stage in the second quarter of the US 10 year treasury yields at 2% may keep the dollar yen supported. Locally, the data calendar is light, although keep a close watch on the 10-year JGB yields. The BOJ seems to be softening its control here, and the JGBs pushing above the highs of the year at 0.15% uh, could, in fact, provide uh, the yen with a little support. I'm actually, from a technical perspective, looking for a pullback here in the dollar yen. Uh, we tested the into the 111 area and we've seen some supply in the market. I'd look for a three-way corrective move now, initially to test the monthly pivot at 109.35, as, uh, as then the 110, 10, uh, sorry, 110.10, 20 caps, we could get a, a new third wave lower to test the 108.50 as support. But as, uh, as this area attracts buyers, I would be looking for um, bullish reversal patterns set long positions Initially looking for a test of the pivotal 112 area. In terms of Australia, along with fears about the impact on the global recovery of new COVID waves, especially in Europe, a set of uninspiring data from China may have prompted some concerns about the pace of recovery of Australia's main trading partner. In the week ahead, the release of the IMF growth estimates may provide some encouraging signals about the global recovery and benefit the commodity block of currencies as a whole. Domestically, all eyes will be on the Reserve Bank of Australia's meeting on Tuesday, although there is a high chance that this will be a non-event for markets, um, the bank should, it's believed, stick to its recent ultra-dovish tone with the recent end of government job seekers wage subsidy scheme, likely adding more pressure to keep rates lower for longer considering the negative impact it's expected to have on the jobs market. So from a technical perspective, I'm looking for the Australian dollar to uh, recover slightly here and make a test certainly of the monthly pivot. Uh, 76.69 and the trend line resistance just above at 70. I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns in this zone, set short positions targeting the equality objective down to 74.53. From here, watch for bullish reversal patterns as I see this could complete this corrective phase and we could be trading higher again in terms of the Aussie. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 5th of April. As always, join me on Thursday, 1 p.m., British summer time, uh, where I'll be running uh, analysis, live analysis on uh, over 20 charts as always, and giving you some actionable insights into, into setups that I'm tracking in the market. As always, traders, have a great week. Thanks very much.